Hello everyone and welcome, my name is Heraset and in this week's episode I'm going to be doing a kind of in-depth review of the game Terra Online. Now to do that we have to kick it off just from the beginning and I'm just going to have a quick overview of the characters and then we'll move on to some more progressive play. I have a level 40 character at the moment and I'm really enjoying this game so I really want to point out the good and the bad so it'll help you pretty much decide on what you want to or think of the game. There's quite a bit of a reputation going around with this game in regards to the actual character creation. And you know, a lot of people immediately, as I flick through there, will see characters like this and immediately judge the game. And it's fascinating at this this point, you know. Oh my god, it's a, you know, pedo bear game or it's a, you know, sexual innuendo game. So, for the purposes of this video, what I'm going to do is try and yes try to go through the rest of this game without making too much reference to the words tit this is going to be a challenge as this is definitely going to be my character but we should move on okay the first aspect that we want to jump out to there is that the game is beautiful the, the actual design of the characters is very appealing to the male group in regards to this as you can see um, I'm just gonna go back there and show some of the male characters. They're even not so bad I think the human male I owe all of them looks pretty much the best uh, I don't know what the story is with the male Castanics as well as I think the high elves. They are pretty um, Very pretty boys, but I think this is very uh, Korean based, you know design on um, pop stars that they have over there but let us move on, jumping straight into the game there. Now I am up to about level 44 I think at this point. And what I want to do is show some of the in-game combat. Now this is pretty much a strong emphasis on the actual style of play that this game offers. And it's very very different to your traditional MMO in that you do not lock onto targets, at least not with a standard ability. Pretty much as you can see there, I'm hovering over a target to get in range before I use an ability. Now the abilities themselves are all based around mouse movement, so you are running in a kind of third person perspective as well as aiming, so you have this first person element as well. And when it gets into play and it gets deep into it, the combat is where this game really shines. You mix that in with the actual graphical beauty of the game, it's, it's definitely its two strong points. Um, as I can just go through a couple of the fights there, I'm actually running with a friend and we are just pretty much doing our quest as regular. This is just a good em emphasis on how the actual game plays out. So it, it still has its traditional grinds. So you have your quest pickups and so forth and you know the monsters they're all really amazingly designed. I really love the combat about this game and you know the the quests are very MMO traditional. You pick them up. I, I, don't, I don't even read them. I never have never have had an interest in reading the actual quests in a game if they were just handed to me. However, just as I move on there, I'm going to have a quick look at the actual inventory system. So the inventory system is pretty straightforward. You have your standard backpack, um, you fill it up with lots and lots of materials and you use them to sell. Now what I will jump onto quickly is because of the uses of this. What they have is a system where the auction house in the game actually uh, is worked around this enchantment system okay think of it as a way of upgrading certain points of gear now there are two types more or less of gear you have your static gear and you have enchantable gear now the enchantable gear allows you to move up a level by enchanting it with items from that current tier so for example you have a level 40 item you pick up a level 40 white item and you can use that white item to enchant the other level 40 item that you have that is enchantable and so forth. This adds in a little bit of a different element when it comes to whites in the game. You're not just vendor trashing them, you are instead selling them on the auction house and it's a good way to make money and I like the fact that they've done this, it's a good aspect because it brings in something different because everything, literally everything that you pick up in the game actually has a purpose in somewhat except for example maybe maybe the bombs, they're, they're probably more useful for another class but there is there is one or two items there that I have found that are just completely useless but that being said I think the inventory system and the auction house system is really really fleshed out and very very good the next thing I will move on to is the actual pickup system grinding and trades in general all require mats as most of you will probably know however in this game 
you're not fighting over them if you're in a group and this is something that I think is a bit more advanced than more traditional MMOs in that you do not take turns instead as you can see here you have the ability to share an actual uh, item for example I found here a node and what I'm doing is mining it with my friend uh, just to show that it can be done I'm also just displaying here some of the the graphical power of the characters and NPCs that are really really well designed the next big thing I will jump into there is the character stats and gear now what I'm gonna do is just give a quick overview of how the gear and characters actually work out and play their roles it's not your standard stat based play instead what we have here is defensive modifier and balance modifier pretty much what these are are the two main stats that every class has in the game now it makes everything a lot simple so that you don't have for example strength intellect with uh, not even wisdom um, cunning or agility as such instead you have these two and what they do is emphasize each point so you have this attack this attack modifier balance modifier and so forth the balance modifier pretty much prevents you from falling down if you get hit or with a critical attack because this is quite useful in PvP more or less the more balance you have the more likely you are to keep it uh, standing when you get hit really hard the more uh, defense modifier actually reduces the damage you take there is no actual HP increase that I have found in the game from gear rather than actual gem sockets what you can see there on the side of the character's uh, information screen is that there are little sockets to each of the items that I'm using at the moment and those sockets are actually equipped with different things to increase stats in one case the armor generally has plus 1000 HP or, or, or plus for example you have a chance to make it a shield on yourself if you get knocked down in combat they're just little buffs but some of them are more useful for tanking as well as DPS and you know when I'm looking at the stats I can't figure out just yet now I haven't reached level 60 myself in the game but just looking at back on it uh, I haven't quite figured out how to prioritize a certain stat other than say I want a lot of attack but the only way to get attack at the moment is actually on my weapons so based on the weapon damage is, is where my attack comes in but I don't have a specific stat that I will jump in and use so we work around this and then we have the increases and the enchantments and stuff like that and it's a very straightforward system probably a little too simple and one of the good and bad aspects because there's something about MMOs and being able to really customize your character have strong aspect and a certain stat over others and you know I feel this is very very limited in this game um, moving on to the next big aspect there in the game is something that I like to call or that the actual game calls BAMS. Now BAM pretty much stands for big ass monster and it's probably one of the standing points to the game. One of the definitely top 5 strong points of the game. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm actually going to run through and actually do a fight with one of these big ass monsters just to show the difference and you can really see during this fight that while it's being played you have to react in a way all right now in this case I'm only using myself and my friend now we don't have a healer backing us up so what I have to try do is keep myself alive while tanking this mob as you can see I'm taking a lot of damage but also reading the mob and his abilities this is one ability he throws in. It's a circular attack. Pretty much what it is is a straightforward attack telling you to get out of there. There are several other attacks to these bombs. Uh, some are just pretty slow. One of them you will notice is that their eyes glow red. This is probably one of the bigger things. This is like a warning sign. Like, get the hell out of there if this thing is attacking you. In most cases, they have a ton of HP and they really require you to be very active to take down especially if you're soloing or two man in these a lot of the actual big ass monsters in the game are not soloable you'll find that a lot of them have some very strong AOE and poison abilities and stuff like this but I found this actual specific big ass monster or giant in this case was a good case to show because he has some pretty powerful slow attacks that are very easy to read and dodge but he then does some you know quick attacks every now and again that catches me off guard even though you think immediately that I'd be like ah this is this is just so easy all you have to do is turn around and do that but you know he has the chance to catch you 
fairly fairly easily and you can find yourself in a bit of a situation where you were forced to run about and try to get your HP back and so forth so everything in the game comes down to timing and while I'm on that I will just jump over a little bit more of the combat system while I'm going through this BAM fight um, what you'll see here is whenever I use a main ability like this this would have been a taunt ability I had another ability pop up on my screen this is one of those aspects that really allows for um, ooh, controller play actually it's not actually a high requirement to have a keyboard and mouse for this game as in you can chain skills to stack up one on top of each other so when I use a priority skill the next skill will pop up to tell me to use it and you can do that by hitting the spacebar it's, it's the defaulted button in the game um, I've had probably a lot of thoughts about whether or not this should be the default button because there is a little side effect to that in that whenever you miss the actual chain skill it causes you to jump now jumping in the game has some very nasty side effects in that you can actually really really take a knockdown every time you get hit when you jump it's just that simple if you jump and get attacked you're immediately knocked down I suppose it does make physics sense in that regard but if you do spend some time and go through any of the skills you will find that it's quite rewarding to stack up some abilities and put them together into use it is a bit buggy at the moment I will admit I did try to do some skill changes myself and I couldn't find for example one of the later skills uh, that I did pick up was it has already set chain abilities to it but I can't change it myself and I found that a little bit annoying um, Continuing on with this fight at the time being, I'm just going to quickly have a look at the action bars as well as the, uh, the chat pane. Chat pane is pretty straightforward. You'll notice that it is the same as any other one. I haven't really seen anything new in that. I have my quest, quest hub up the side. Pretty much it only stacks up to 7 and you can change and remove them. I don't know what the maximum level of quests is in the game. I haven't really reached it yet because I've been flying through them. Um, the combat system itself does take quite a bit of time to get used to. This is probably one of the first and very, very daunting parts of the game. You're very, very used to using WAS and D as your movement instead of just forward and mouse. This is something that a lot of players, I think, will have a lot of trouble with in the beginning, and it's a big turnoff. The starting of the game is not very user friendly in that regard. The actual setup I have probably took me about 20 to 30 minutes just to rebind everything because it actually prioritizes keys such as your F keys on the keyboard uh, and using alt and other buttons there's no such thing as tabbing in the game and and so forth this brings me on to the next part where you have the mouse um, and the mouse pretty much shows up whenever I you hit alt in the game it's it's how you access or move your mouse around the screen because otherwise you're in this first person perspective of mouse movement so every turn you make is pretty much affected now just as we jump in we're in a situation here where, now where I'm really low on HP now this is a little bit fixed just a little <laughs> what I wanted to do is just show how the, the BAM how it's still going and how I can get my friend in this scenario to try and generate enough threat to take aggro from me while I sit and heal and try to get bandage up and so you know use potions and so forth which brings me on to the next problem with the game recovery this is probably one of the bigger flaws of the game in that you, the only way to actually recover your HP in this game is by using bandages or potions this probably is one of the bigger flaws. I can't actually at the end or when I'm out of combat recover my health using a standard means such as a rest button or so forth. There are two aspects to this and I will jump in and show the next bit of aspect or the next aspect to this after this fight because I want to actually show you how it displays and it's called the stamina system. And there's quite a little bit of information on that. This mob should go down any moment now. I think we pretty much had it and yeah it goes excellent so that was one of the BAM fights so next thing I will do is move on there to the stamina system okay now to really show the stamina system in play what I'm actually gonna do here is die 
what I'm gonna do is bring up my mouse and just show you at the moment as you can see I have no more stamina this is pretty much my HP at its maximum now I want you to focus this part because the moment I res you will see how this affects now as you can see the moment I died my stamina overall HP has dropped quite a large amount and what I'm gonna do is just quickly resurrect there and this is one of the mm, kind of gripes with the game so I'm brought back to this area now and now my stamina is sitting at 18. To recover this I have to go find a camp so to speak but for the sake of speed I have one in my hand so what we're going to use is a campfire. Now what this will do is it will bring up my stamina. Spend stamina, 18%. This is how you recover after you die. There are two options to this especially if you're out in the open. This is really really frustrating. There are a couple of ways. One we can use a potion to restore our stamina and these potions are pretty rare at the moment and they cost quite a lot on the, on the auction houses and so forth so when you're in a raid environment uh, well presumably when a raid environment is accessed this will be a problem for people that have died and been rezzed because they res with the same amount of stamina which means they are forced to either wait a long time or forced to use one of these potions the next thing is if you res anywhere else outside the world you have no way to restore it other than this mean there is of course if you do resurrect back at one of your towns you have the option to use the noble cleric which will bring your stamina back you can restore stamina for a certain amount of money so for this case I'm gonna bring it back up and restore my stamina and now I am pretty much in this scenario if I want to get my HP back at a faster pace I'm forced to use once again a potion or a bandage the stamina system itself is not something I generally like I think there's too much emphasis on recovery time and you know as much as it is good to have a very strong um, punishment for you know dying in the game you shouldn't have to feel like you're in a position where you can't actually really play the game for five to ten minutes afterwards because you're waiting on your stamina to return so you know I think this could use a little bit of work personally either more options to recover stamina or just remove the stamina system altogether there is kind of a mix there um, but you know I've, I've marked this down as kind of neutral I'm not happy with it but I'm not too sad with it either I like the fact that there is a punishment system but the thing is at the moment there are two punishment systems one punishment system is the fact that obviously your stamina goes the second one is the fact that you get the, your gems removed so you lose a gem if you die more or less it, pretty much just breaks and this is it but there's no other cost to armor uh, other than that and the gems themselves as you try to get them back you can either farm them by killing mobs or you can get them off the auction house as such that's it for the stamina system we should move on there to the last couple of points on the main game which would be the achievements and the transportation system as well as titles and, and little pieces like this the achievement system is in play and of course you can earn achievements by doing all the relative quests and over uh, general achievements that are available in the game as before with this game uh, and I'm seeing prevalent in a lot of games which I disagree with is the titling system this title system at the moment is terrible in that you get a title for nearly every second main quest that you do in the game which makes them very very useless I don't know why developers have decided to go down that route of oh let's just give everyone loads and loads of titles so they can choice I mean it loses its appeal to me personally I don't know about you guys but that's that for the achievements anyway they are there there is a working achievement and title system in play the next part I will go on to is the transportation system and this is a little bit more problematic the transportation has, system has several means at the moment pretty much you get around by using scrolls or your flying mount so to speak you have the ability to transport with a flying mount from continent to continent um, and it's a really really nice animation and it works well and then looks beautiful you get a quick overview of the area that you were running around before going into a kind of a teleporter that brings you to the next area so when you see a map on the large side and you need to fly to another position instead of thinking oh my god the flight distance from one end of the map to the other is going to take me 10 minutes you just go into a teleporter after about 30 seconds of flying and arrive out the other end after about maybe another 30 seconds or so of load time depending on your machine um, but this yeah just gives more emphasis eyes on the actual beauty of the game in that really they have made this game very very good looking 
Um, but I'll move on to the last point I said there, which was the scrolls and teleportation. Um, there is a problem with this in that people are generally using the stuck ability to get around. This is kind of a bug. I'm not even sure if it is a bug or just a design flaw. They have the uh, they obviously have this transportation system in play where it requires you to use scrolls to get around. So it's like using heartstones or or special 30 minute cooldowns but you know you have to go purchase the scroll to teleport to another position to your main city or whether it be the next main area that you're going to do you can buy the scrolls in that area well people avoid this by generally stacking up scrolls in case they really need them by using the stuck button so pretty much whenever you're using unstuck it puts your you know on a stuck cooldown for 20 or 30 minutes and that's it so it's like why didn't they just implement a hearthstone i do not know but we shall move on to the last couple of points which is more based around the game design and what is incomplete um you'll probably find during the game uh, there are cutscenes in the game and they're quite well fleshed out however some of them do not actually have audio yet i feel this is probably a issue that was coming from the translation of the korean version to the more english version and that you will probably come across cutscenes in the game that just do not have audio whatsoever this is a bit of a problem and a big downside to the game. It really shows the game as incomplete and pretty much puts it back a little bit into a beta stage. This shouldn't actually be released as a, a working game when you know you have cutscenes and special animations that are showing in a game that are not actually finished or not translated properly. Other little bugs and things like that that I have encountered were being desynchronized in an area these are just general server issues however they're continuing to patch this quite uh, readily and i'm quite impressed with that so hopefully they should resolve all of these little server issues and lag spikes and such like that but that i think comes with every mmo so i'm not going to judge it too much on that but overall this is as much information i could throw out on this game in the time period i am trying to keep it under um, I hope there was some information. If there's anything more, guys, that you do want to hear about this game, please let me know. I will probably be continuing to play it up to level 60. I want to get a decent decent amount to play in. I know for the moment there is no real end game content and there is also no real war zones or PvP based content. Now the PvP in the game is pretty amazing. I'm just playing around with some duels and it's very, very challenging and fun because of the way the combat, combat system works out. But that's it for this episode if there is anything i probably missed quite a few things or i could cover quite a lot of other areas in a lot more detail but just to keep this kind of within 20 minutes or so uh, so you do get a full overview of the game rather than just oh my god tits which i think i broke my rule oh well big tits there's lots of tits in the game oh and dragons 